Hey guys, Brendan New Productions here, and welcome to my 26th, I believe it is, Java tutorial. In the last tutorial, I discussed how to actually draw an image to the screen, and in the tutorial, we actually made it this application, an application that draws a small 25 by 25 image of a spiral onto a screen. In that tutorial, I actually promised that my next tutorial would be about moving images, and uh, the tutorial after that would be about rotating images, and then there'd be some collisions. Essentially, we're setting ourselves up to create our own little game. Um, in my previous tutorial, my previous game tutorials, actually, I kind of just jumped around and did everything, but I actually wanted to go over things part by part in order to actually um, allow people uh, to get the general idea of what what's actually going on. So let's go ahead and get started in this tutorial. So in this tutorial, I will be discussing how to actually move an image. So the main problem with this lies in um, this scenario. So we have an image uh, here uh, of the image class, and we called it spiral. So what we want to do, excuse me, what we want to do is we actually want to move the image. So if we type spiral dot to see all of its submethods, uh, we can see that there's nothing that relates to its location because the image class does not actually have a location object. So what we want to do is we want to actually give the image class a location object. Now there are several ways to do this. First of all, we can actually make another rectangle and have the rectangle and image constantly sync in location. However, a better way to do this is to create a new class that contains an image and a rectangle and have the rectangle um, actually be the location of the image and um, have the image be the image, essentially. So let's go ahead and go ahead and do that. So right here, I have the um, code from the last project. And now, if you haven't seen this tutorial, go ahead and check it out now. I believe it is part 25, um, loading and displaying images in a Java applet. And it is on my channel. So I have the code here from the last tutorial. And so what we're going to do is we're simply going to extend this code in order to create an image that you can actually move. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a new class. Now, if you didn't know, you can go ahead and create multiple classes per dot .class file. Um, but uh, it's usually just common, like it's usually standard to create a new class file for each class. But in order to keep it nice and organized for this tutorial, I'm just going to make a new class within this dot class file. So we're going to go ahead and create a new class, um, rectangle image. Now this class rectangle image is going to contain two instance variables. It's going to contain the image and a rectangle that we have bound to the image. So we're going to say private uh, image, and we're going to call this img, and we're going to set that equal to null, and then we're also going to have private rectangle rect, and we're going to set that equal to null. Um, and so now what it's going to want us, or it's going to have us import the rectangle class, and so the next thing we need to do is we actually need to set up a constructor. So I'm just going to say public um, public rectangle image, and so this is going to be, this is going to actually override the default this constructor here. And what we're just going to have this do is set img to a new image and have our rect equal a new rectangle. So, so far we have this class that contains a... Oh, oh um, so... Uh, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, so far we have this class that contains a uh, image and a rectangle. So in order to actually create a new object, we're going to override the constructor correctly this time. And we're going to say public rectangle image. So um, when this person actually creates a rectangle image, they're going to provide three things for us. They're going to provide the image file itself, or the image itself, the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the user input a image, image, um, a y x coordinate, so int x, and a y coordinate, int y. And then with that, we can go ahead and set up our uh, rectangle image. So we can say that img equals i, or rather, this dot img equals the parameter img. And now we have an x and a y location. So in order to actually correspond the x and the y location with the rectangle, we need to set the rectangle object to be a new rectangle. So we could say this dot rect equals new rectangle. And then to actually specify the x and the y, we just need to type x, y. And then it's also going to need a width and a height. So what we're going to do here is we're going to send in the width and the height of the image. So we're going to say img dot 
img.getWidth. And for the image observer, we're just going to say null or this. Let's say this. No, null, rather. And um, for the height, we're going to say img.getHeight. And we're going to say null as the image observer. So now we've got a new rectangle set up and a new image set up. So, so far we've got our own class with an image and a rectangle, and the image is just going to be whatever the user sends in as an image, and the rectangle is going to be a rectangle located at the location um, with the height and width of the image. So now what we actually need to do is we need to create a, um, a method that will actually return the x-coordinate of the uh, image and a y-coordinate of the image. Or actually what we can... Yeah, yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. So in order to actually do that, we can create a public method that actually returns the rectangle. So we're going to say public rectangle um, get rect. And this method will actually return our rectangle rect. We can also have a method that gets the image, so public rectangle, or public image rather, get img, and this will return this.img. So we've got our getters here, and um, now we can create a few methods. Now this tutorial is actually going to be on how to move an image. So the only method that we're actually going to want to use is, or we're actually going to want to create, is a move method. So we're just going to say public void move, and now we can actually specify intx and inty, where intx is the um, the new x location, and inty is the new y location. So all we need to do for this is we can just say this dot rect dot move, and we can set in x and y as the new x and y locations. Now it's actually going to send us a um, depreciated method because um, move is actually an old method in the old versions of Java, and that means that they have actually replaced it with a, a new, better method. So we can actually use the set bounds method here. So we're just going to want to send an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and then a width and a height. Well, the width and the height of the rectangle aren't changing, so we can just go ahead and say rect.width and rect.height. So what we've effectively done is move this rectangle to the new location and retained its shape. So now we can actually go ahead and incorporate this rectangle image into our old class. So if you recall from the beginning of this tutorial, our old class simply displayed a spiral image at a fixed location. And this fixed location is um, 2550, and then the uh, width and height are 2525. So we can actually go ahead and change this class around a little bit. Instead of having a private image spiral, um, we can actually create this as a private rectangle image spiral. And we're just going to set that equal to null. And then when the paint method is actually created, we could say if spiral equals null, then we're going to say spiral equals new rectangle image, which is the class that we just created. And then we're going to want to send in an image and an x and a y. So our image is going to actually call from the get image class. And the path is going to be, oh shoot, <laughs> what was our old path? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and press control Z. Okay, it was spiral.png. So we're going to say new rectangle image, and we're going to say get image of spiral.png. And then it wants us to specify an x and a y, so we're just going to say 25 for the x and 50 for the y, just like before. And now, instead of actually saying g2.drawImage and providing a x and y and width and height, we can actually just say g2.drawImage. Well, actually, what we can do is we can actually incorporate a draw method into our rectangle image. So we could say public void draw, and the user will actually have to import or insert a graphics 2D object. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to say g2.drawImage, and the image we're going to draw is our image img, so this.img. Uh, the x location is going to be this.rect.x, the y location is going to be this.rect.y, uh, the width is going to be this.rect.width, and the height is going to be this.rect.height, and of course we need the image observer, which is going to simply be null in this case.
So now that we've got a draw method done, all we need to do is say spiral.draw, and we're going to send in the graphics G2. So, so far what we did is we created a new class that contains both an image and a rectangle. We then set up a constructor so the user could send in an image file, an x value, and a y value. We then set the, uh, the instance variable, the private instance variable image, to uh, the sent in parameter, and then we created a new rectangle that actually evolves around the image height, width, and the x and y provided. We then created two getters, get rect and get image, that actually return to the rectangle and the image that are unused in the above class. Then we created the move, cla the move method that actually moves the rectangle. And since it moves the rectangle, it's actually going to move the visible point of the image on the screen since it is drawn at the rectangles x and y. Then in our parent class, we actually simply changed the um, type of spiral to a rectangle image, set it up so it has a 25 by 50 lo or 25 50 location, sent in the image, and then we can actually go ahead and test out our class. And as you can see, the image does not appear. Typical, typical, typical. So we can actually go ahead and um, change some things. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the draw method to actually take in an image observer. So we're going to say image observer O. And so it's going to be drawn at image observer O. We're going to import image observer, import, <laughs> input. And then we're actually just going to want to send in the image observer as a parameter. Oops, this. Once we're done with that, we can run the application. And then we get our very, very tiny, tiny pixel drawn. Do you guys, are you guys seeing that? There's a very tiny pixel drawn on the screen. Um, but I think this is because our width and height were not calculated properly. So as you can see, our img.getWidth null and img.getHeight null, I believe that simply to returned a 1, 1 value, when what we need it to do is we actually need it to return a 25 by 25. So we can debug this by actually manually typing in 25 by 25 into the new rectangle, and then go ahead and debug, and as you can see, it draws properly. So the get width and get height methods were simply not working for the IMG class. And I believe this is because we don't have a proper image observer. So we're just going to go ahead and make the parameter send in an image observer once again. And um, we're going to set this null image observer to the image observer that we send in. And then send in an image observer in our parent class and go ahead and run the method. And if we do this, um, our <laughs> image still appears as a one pixel by one pixel object, which is quite annoying, especially when the image itself is 25 by 25. Um, so, in order to solve this, we're just going to type in 25 by 25 as our width and height and um, go from there. So if we go ahead and run the application, you see that our image properly draws. So now that we've got our rectangle image class set up with the move method, we can actually go ahead and move the image. So we've got it's currently set at 25 by 50. However, let's say we want to move it to the far right of the window. So before we draw it, we're actually just going to say spiral.move and we're going to move it to the new x and y. We're going to set the, y, the x equal to 350 and the y equal to 50 still. So now when we run the application, the image should be on the far right of the window. Which it is indeed, because we actually use the move method to move the image over. Now if we actually alter the y value of the move method and move it down 200 pixels, you can see that the image is now near the bottom right of the window, whereas before it was located at the top right. So the move method does work properly because it simply changes the variables of the rectangle, which is how the draw method is coordinated. Now the only problem we need to fix was getting the image's width and height. So one of the main problems with actually running code like this is that what we're trying to do is get the image and then rapidly after we get the image, uh, we're actually trying to get the width and the height because it's in the actual um, parameter itself. So that is essentially running at the same exact time. 
So what we're going to do to get the width and the height is we're actually going to change the image to an image icon to make sure it loads uh, quickly and properly. Because what was happening before is we're trying to get the width and the height of the image. However, the image was not actually loaded yet. So we can uh, actually get the woman the image's width and height by creating an image icon. So we can say image icon icon equals new image icon. And then as a parameter, we're going to want to send in the image, so IMG. It's then going to have us import the image icon class. OK. And um, then as the width and height, we can just say icon.getWidth, or icon width rather, and icon.getIcon height. And now if we're in the application, you can see that the width and height were calculated correctly, and the image has been loaded on the screen, and effectively moved over to the right and down a little bit. So all we needed to do was alter the way that we got the image's width and height. So we can go ahead and delete this image observer portion from the parameter, since we no longer need this. And then we can actually go ahead and mess around with this code a little bit. Now since we're actually getting the rectangle image, or getting the image of spiral.png, and it loads the size um, according to what the image is, we can actually replace spiral.png with any image. So we can uh, go ahead and create a new image in Microsoft Paint, and we're actually going to set the width and height of this to 100, just to demonstrate this. And then in this image, I'm just going to go ahead and draw some zigzags, and then save the image. So I'm going to save as. And then I'm going to go ahead and save the image to exactly where our project is located. So mine's located in my Java folder, Workspace 2, and this was in Tutorial Project. And then in the BIM folder, I'm just going to name this zigzag.png. So now that that image is uh, actually saved, we can go ahead and just change the name of Spiral to Zigzag. And then if we run the application, it's going to load Zigzag and put it at the appropriate location. So there is actually an imaginary rectangle around Zigzag, which will allow us to do cool things with the, um, with the image itself. Now if you actually wanted to see where the rectangle was around Zigzag, you would simply alter the draw method so it actually drew the rectangle. So we could say g2.draw and then just simply type in rect as the parameter. So now if we run the application, you can see that this is our bounding rectangle. This is the actual size of the image, and this is how much white space I actually left in the image. Whoops. But now we can actually use this rectangle to detect several things, like collisions. Or um, we can actually use this rectangle to uh, rotate the image, or have it interact with other shapes. But for now, we're just going to use it to actually move the rectangle. In the next tutorial, I will teach you how to actually make images collide with one another using this rectangle image class. And in the tutorial after that, I will discuss how to actually rotate images around an axis. So thanks for watching this tutorial, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Peace.